I don't normally do unboxings, but I wanted to show how well packaged this Nekpoka air conditioner unit was. So they put the hoses in the box, kind of using it to keep the inner box, the smaller inner box, secure. And in the smaller inner box, we had some hardware as well as the internal air handler or the inside air handler, a drain hose. And then in the larger internal box, we had the outside unit, which is the, the compressor, the um, condenser, some hardware, and the wiring. And then it's all caged in that red plastic um, unit. Oh yeah, and along with a fan to push or pull air across the condenser. So that was me just checking out the wiring. Everything looked pretty good on it, to be honest. And I was I was pretty impressed. All in all, I'm pretty sure uh, that's about the equivalent of two gauge wire. And that tag probably says something about red for positive and black is negative. But I'm only guessing. Now what got me looking at this particular unit is the size. Um, I needed something extremely small if possible. And as you look through that cage, you can see that rubber hose between the condenser and the compressor. There it is again. Now some some units that are being sold have they have a hard line. That one has that flexible rubber line and I needed that because in the event that I needed to separate the compressor from the condenser, like take the cage away and mount the compressor in one location and maybe tilt the condenser so that it's not so tall. I, I figured this setup would allow me to do it. Um, the units with the hard line, uh, it, it wouldn't have worked for me. So that's one of the reasons that I chose this unit. So just getting some measurements going. It's about 20 and a half inches wide in the middle. It's a little wider at the bottom, 20 and three quarters. And then at the top, it's about the same as the middle, 20 and a half. Height-wise, now this was the critical measurement for me, 16 inches. I want to mount this underneath my rig to give it the cleanest, you know, I'm not going for stealth, but I just wanted a clean install. And 16 inches was going to be okay. At the base, it's about 7 and a half inches thick. It's not counting the fan. I wasn't really looking at the fan in that measurement. And then at the top, it's about six inches, at least the cage is. So when you measure the cage and then just try to imagine a line being drawn behind the fan, it's about 10 and a half inches thick, which still left me plenty of room for where I intended to mount the unit under the rig. Next step here uh, is to get some markings on the plate where I'm gonna drill some holes corresponding to where I'll drill holes on the top of the frame. Once I get the holes in the plate drilled, I also need to mark the holes on the plate for this chassis to be mounted to since I can mount it directly to the plate um, pretty straightforward this mounts it looks like from the size of this fitting is going to mount right here to this part of the unit and then the other hose this fitting right here it even has this little adapter on it it'll mount I believe here on the top of the compressor where this blue line is. Um, I can see it already has the O-ring on it. They all do. That's nice. Um, 
I have some oil, but I don't have, I have the kind of oil that comes in the pressurized can. But I'm gonna go to the auto parts store and grab some of the oil in the bottle um, that you basically kind of pour in the line. And that way I can lubricate these seals um, as I'm putting it together. But I'm not quite at that step yet. I'm going to draw this line across the top. I'm going to mark that one. And then the one at the bottom. Yep. Here we go. All right, let me do a quick update here. I had to uh, go run a few errands, and uh, so I'm just now getting back, but one of the things I went and bought were these L brackets here. Is one partially mounted. I wanted to leave it loose so that it can go up and down a little bit. Once I get the top bolts and the plate mounted, I'll know how far up or down to move this. This hole should already line up with a hole that's on the chassis. Um, and then obviously that bracket will go there. All right, we got the plate installed um, underneath the rig. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see but the plates mounted here. The L brackets are on the other side, mounted to this cross member here. Very firm, very sturdy. Um, and all the nuts, I put Loctite on it. So I just have the six bolts here to mount, three on each side. We got three on this side for the big red cage. It'll mount right here and I'll update once I get that installed. I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and install the hose on this top part of the compressor. So I have my 10 millimeter and I can reach in through the hole and get that loose. Only thing I couldn't do is get one out of the six bolts to mount the cage to go through. I messed around and I guess that, that bracket got a little too close to the hole. I got the hoses all the way up and all the way in so now I can get a, a realistic perspective on how far they'll go over so it's gonna have to that's about right I guess just judging from where I have this that um, the blower is gonna have to be in this area because yeah that's that's about that's that's not too bad. I could live with that. 
And now to give you a quick look from down below, this is the other side, the driver's side uh, view. And these are my, my lines, high pressure, low pressure. And then you can see, maybe you can see, it's kind of dark under here, but everything's going over to the corner and up into the rig. Nice and neat. All this has to be tied up and tied together, but that's the that's the thing you do last after you've tested it and um, made sure everything is in in good working order. Hey everybody! So, just wanted to kind of talk about the rest of the process. I've I've got all the outside stuff um, hooked up. All the wires are ran into the rig, and the only thing I have to do now is finish making the electrical the electrical connections in here hook up the, the tubes hook up the tubes to the air handler unit here and then the one plug coming from below the vehicle the compressor um, there is a drain tube like right here um, they put two of them but this one's capped so this is the one that I guess we'll be hooking up to and I will make sure <laughs> I'll make sure the unit is tilted just a bit to make sure the water heads over to that section of the air handler unit let's see um, the one thing about the one thing about the instructions is they said that the wires coming from the compressor, they're about, um, here we go, they're about uh, number two size wires, about about that thick. There's my pinky. You can kind of see, maybe. Okay, <clears throat> so it has like wire about this size coming from the compressor, both positive and negative. I want to say they have about nine feet of wire, and in the instructions it says you can lengthen you can lengthen the wiring, but not more than, they said five meters, which when I looked it up is about 16 feet total. But I'm almost certain that their assumption is you're using the same size wire. So the problem I have is that I'm mounting the air conditioner unit in one corner of the rig. My batteries are all the way in the opposite corner. So instead of using the same size wire, the number two, and I, I have plenty of it. Well, I wouldn't say plenty, but I probably had enough that I could make it work, both positive and negative, number two. Um, I instead, let me see, I don't know if I can, let me bring you to the wire because it's, it's too big to, um, let me show you. I instead used um, number two ot size cable to get the to make the distance. Um, and there's some reasons why they give you a limit on how long the wire can be. I'm just holding these two up for comparison. It's about twice as thick the wire um, that I use. So there's some reasons why I went with a thicker wire like that because that effectively is like me taking the batteries and moving them closer to the compressor rather than trying to lengthen and be limited by the wires coming from the compressor going to the batteries. So this is this is the area that I'm looking at using. It might be kind of dark but I took the two baskets that were here off off the wall and created that open that space. Now I may be able to put one basket back either above the air handler unit or below it. I'm not sure. Um, and if I can't, then I can utilize the space differently. But I got to figure out where I can get the air handler, and I need it up about as high as possible would be my goal. All right, we got the cover 
back on the side plate here on this uh, channel and you can see a little bit of the foam spray foam I shot it down into that cavity and then I came up from the bottom okay so that's the view from underneath the rig um, it looks like the foam might have filled in the area pretty good hopefully so and again it's just to discourage um, pests from trying to get into the living space I got my mounting board here all my holes on the edges are to mount the air handler unit and now I have my TV mount mounted about in the center. Um, the weight of the air handler is heavier up high. So I wanted this biased. Not much, but a little bit higher as well. I got to mount the arm to the wall first. And that's going to allow the air handler to, to swing out and sit at an angle when in use. Well, through the magic of editing, I got the inside air handler unit mounted. I got the hoses connected at the expansion valve, which is the way it's designed. And you can see it swings back to the wall. And then when I'm ready to use it, I can swing it back away from the wall and point it towards the living space. So while this was being vacuumed down that little red box down there on the ground is uh, the, some kind of vacuum system harbor freight sales dirt cheap 13 14 bucks and it uses the air compressor that I had uh, sitting on my tailgate now this this is the um, the manifold gauges again harbor freight uh, dirt cheap with a coupon so I, I went ahead and grabbed some and the nice thing about this unit or this setup is it uses R134, which is the same stuff that's in most uh, cars. I know they've got an, a newer R134, but this uses the old stuff. All right, so I just screwed my mounting block to the wall. I have uh, 12 volts coming from the battery there. And then 12 volt positive to the air conditioner goes on top of that. I'm going to add a washer and then I'll secure it with a nut. This is one of those um, nuts with the nylon insert on it to keep it from backing off. Everything's mounted securely. I have not turned the unit on yet. Um, I'm still pulling vacuum and once I clean up everything and get ready to charge the system, I'll turn it on at that point. That's what my gauges are reading right now. And I used about a can and a half. Apologize for the sweaty, greasy looking face, but been on that heat working, trying to get the last uh, the last bit done to the air conditioner setup. Now I'm I'm just testing it. I put two cans of refrigerant in it. Um, pressures look good, so now it's just a matter of just letting it do its thing. It is definitely blowing colder air, cold air. I can hear a light humming, a, a, a humming sound coming from underneath. That's the compressor and the fan working down there. But it's, it's nothing. Uh, n nothing that would keep me awake. <laughs> Let me say it that way. It'd actually probably be that nice little hum that puts you to sleep. I was in the process of editing this video about three weeks after I recorded it and realized I didn't close out the video. 
So I thought, well, let me go ahead and, and do something really brief here, a quick summary of what my experience has been with the air conditioner unit since I installed it. And so far it's been fantastic. I haven't had any issues. Now, obviously I can't speak to longevity, so we don't know how long it'll continue to be fantastic. But um, as of recording this, no complaints whatsoever. Um, sure, I, I just thought of something. The, the remote, the lettering on the remote is written in uh, Chinese, I think. And I, so I don't know exactly what, what the buttons will do and I haven't played around with it. It's only a handful, so it wouldn't be hard to figure it out, but it hasn't been a concern of mine. But other than that, that's the only thing I can really point to that, uh, that doesn't work for me, so to speak. Um, I've used it most of the time during the day, full, like, you know, really bright sunny days, getting maximum solar. Uh, I can just turn the air conditioner on and it runs off my solar or off my solar with minimal deductions from my batteries. Um, at night, I have to run it off a generator because of where I'm located. I don't have access to shore power, but I did go uh, to a campground a couple of weeks ago, and I had the opportunity to plug in, and it worked great off of shore power. No problems with that either. Um, so, yeah, I guess the, the bottom line is if I had to buy it again, I would. If, uh, if I had to recommend it to a friend, I would. Um, I bought mine off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description just for convenience. I'm not an affiliate, so uh, if you find it at a better price uh, somewhere else, or maybe a, a slightly different configuration that works better for your rig, um, I would go that route. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to um, save money over some of the other units that I've seen out there that are substantially more expensive. Um, and uh, so like for 800 bucks, I'm gonna consider this, a, I'm gonna give it five stars. So hopefully that you got something out of this video and um, I'll try not to let another year and a half go by before I upload another video. And uh, by all means, feel free to hit the like button Subscribe to the channel. Tell some folks about it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.